Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own customizable DIY super strong torque arms for your e-bike. I'm going to be making mine out of these shelving brackets I bought at the hardware store. They're almost 5 mil thick and if you wanted you can get thicker ones, you can get longer ones, you can customize your torque arms however you want. These should be more than sufficient for the application that I'm putting them on. So if you need some crazy strong torque arms, this video will help you. I also picked up some hose clamps, which you're also going to need unless you're going to be welding directly to your frame. This was the torque arm that came with my kit, and it only came with one of them, and I do not think that this is up to the task to handle 6 kilowatts. It also didn't fit my frame whatsoever, and there was no orientation I could set it at in order to get the bolt to go through. So you might run into that problem too. In that case, gotta make your own. I'm going to be making two arms out of one single bracket. You could also do this to save a little bit of money. I'm just cutting out the bend here so I have two flat pieces. There is one caveat where one of the arms is going to be longer than the other. I don't particularly care about this. My bike is already asymmetrical because I have a cassette on one end and a disc brake on the other and they're not matching nor symmetrical. You won't have this problem if you just buy a piece of steel. I just had these laying around so that's what I'm using to build them and if you wanted to you can replicate this easily. If not just get a long piece of steel and cut it out to roughly these shapes. This is the hardest part of the project and also the most critical. You want to get a template for the axle size that you have. You can make it out of paper, you can make it out of tape. I am using the torque arm that came with it because it fits very snug over the axle. Once you have your shape spray paint it over so it leaves a template behind that you can use to cut out the correct size. You want to orient this hole correctly so line it up with your bike and make sure that the hole is actually going to lay the torque arm on the side of your frame. After that is the arduous task of cutting out this hole and you want to take your time here and once you start getting closer it's a good idea to test fit it on your bike over and over again so that you get a very precise fit. You don't need a Dremel you can drill out a bunch of holes then use a file. I am also making a cutout for the rear derailleur because it was in interfering so just taking off a little bit of the end there. You're going to want to do some test fitting, then some more grinding, some more testing, some more grinding, and over and over. You're going to do this because you don't want that hole to be so tight that you have to hammer it on. It's going to be really hard to take it off your axle later. You also don't want it so loose that the torque arm isn't doing as well of a job as it could be. You might need to do some clearancing like I did for the derailleur here and now that we have the hole and this slides onto the axle which is very important. Another factor in the fitment that I like to do however it is not necessary you can just lay the thing flat against like this but I like to add a little bend that curves around the rest of the frame. The reason that this is the case is because most bikes in the rear here will have a round tube that is then welded to a flat plane and because of that welded roundness there's going to be a gap if you just lay it flat. So I've here bent this up in the vise. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit in this video. And now it is laying flat against not only the flat plane, but also the rounded part. It's not that difficult to do. And I think taking this extra step definitely makes it look a little bit more finished. Everything feels a lot more solid in my opinion. So I recommend doing it. However, it is not necessary. Now that we have the hole correctly cut to fit over the axle, the provision for the derailleur and also the bend in it. It is looking very good at this point. Because I already have one side done, I'm just using that as the template for the other one. Not only do I not have to measure the orientation again because it's already correct, it's going to be parallel with the other torque arm. But the hole is already cut out correctly so I can just spray through it and get a new template that is going to work on the other side. Then I just repeat the steps of cutting out this hole. This stencil didn't come out as clean as my first one. However, it doesn't really matter because this is going to get me in the ballpark and I'm going to be doing a lot of tweaking to that hole to make sure it's perfect anyway. Now I'm bending up the second one just like I did the first one. This is how I'm showing you that I'm doing it. Just stuffing it in the vise with some guidelines for where I wanted the bend to be and then just shoving a pole on top of it and then pulling on it like a lever. You don't have to do it this way. However, I did find that doing it this way provided some pretty clean bends that were uniform 
as opposed to maybe just pulling on it with some pliers or hitting it with a hammer. You have more control if you do it this way. Just like when you're cutting the hole, you're going to be bending it and then going and checking on the bike, coming back to the vise, bending it some more and over and over again until it lays how you want it to. Okay, so now we have the left side all bent up and looking how I want it. Everything is laying flat and looking good. I did leave a little bit of a gap next to the rounded part and that's because I'm going to be putting a piece of rubber around that. I will show you later and now that I have this side done I also have completed the other side and everything is looking really good. If you don't leave a gap it most likely will scratch up your frame so if you care about that I'll show you a tip later on in this video. That's why I gave a little bit of a gap between the end of the arm and the rounded part. Make sure you get some hose clamps that are large enough to go around your torque arms and your frame and you don't want them so big that you have a ton of excess material coming out and you don't want them so small that they're hard to get on and off of there. Here I'm making some marks so I can do a bit of a notch in the end of the torque arms and this is more of an aesthetic thing. It doesn't really do anything functionally. It just allows me to set the hose clamp in the same spot every time kind of like an index it only takes a second to trim them out and i think it adds a little bit more of a professional look here i am just sanding things up so that i can give them a coat of paint you don't have to paint yours obviously unless you're using mild steel that doesn't have a protective coating these in particular are already galvanized or zinc coated so they're corrosion resistant but i just wanted them black or darker. This paint job did not come out as good as I would have liked. It's because this paint was just extremely sticky and even after like a week of drying it still was kind of tacky and I don't really know why that is but it made it so that every time I would put it down on something it would be kind of blotchy but from far away it looks totally fine it looks pretty good but if you're looking real close it's not the best another finishing touch i'm adding is a piece of rubber that is just an old tire from a bicycle and i'm going to be wrapping the frame where i'm going to be using the hose clamp with some rubber you don't need to do this however it is a nice little cautionary step that is going to make it so that the hose clamp isn't going to be digging into your frame cutting through the paint potentially rusting over time depending on the composition of what your bike is made out of. It's easy to do and it doesn't take much so might as well just do it. I'm just attaching it here with some zip ties. Super easy and that's why I left a gap because the rubber does have a little bit of thickness and if you made it laying straight on the frame then it's not going to sit as well when you tighten it down with the hose clamp. Once you've done that just throw the hose clamp over the whole thing and start tightening it down and you want this to be pretty tight as tight as you can without going too far because I've realized that hose clamps are pretty easy to strip out. Hose clamps are very very strong and they also have the mechanical advantage of being further away from the pivot point so they don't need to be insanely strong. And here's how we're looking with everything finished. Yes I should have painted the ends of the hose clamp and tightened them down before painting. It's totally fine. I might respray them later. This was super easy to do and it was a fun project. It only took me about two hours and I know that you could do it too. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.